So the last video with chemistry um, for this little portion is going to be about pH and how pH is affected by water molecules. Um, so one thing that people don't realize is that when water is in a pure situation, it's going to dissociate into OH and H+, plus, um, OH minus and H+. Plus. Um, so let me get my little doodler out here. Okay, so remember we um, originally had H with an O and an H, right? So what's going to happen is um, water is actually going to dissociate into this when it's in its pure state, okay? Now, what this means is in a perfect pure water situation, the amount of OH minus or hydroxyl is going to be equal to the amount of H plus or hydrogen ions, okay? So OH minus should equal H plus in a pure water situation. In that case, that solution is going to have a pH of seven, okay? So seven means OH minus and H plus are equal. Okay, so pH is going to be measuring how acidic or basic a solution actually is. Okay, uh, so if you had a solution where, so let's talk about the pH scale first. pH. So the pH scale is going to range from 0 all the way to 14. Okay, and 7 obviously is right in the middle and that's going to be neutral. There we go. Okay, so um, what we're going to talk about is this area over here and this area over here. Okay, so let's talk about this area over here. And if I was going to have a beaker of a solution that would be representative of that, it would look a lot like this, where it'd have H plus, H plus, H plus, H plus and maybe one OH minus, right? Okay, now if we talk about over here, the opposite would be true. These are the worst beakers I've ever drawn. This one would have a lot of OH minus, OH minus, and maybe one H plus, right? Okay, so with a pH that's less than seven, so between zero and seven, that's gonna be what we call an acid and an acid is going to have a high concentration of H plus molecules. Whereas over here, when you have a whole bunch of OH minus, that's going to be what we call a base, and a base is going to have a pH greater than seven all the way up to 14, okay? So obviously, the closer you get to 14, the more OH minus you're gonna have in relation to H plus, right? The closer you get to seven, the less OH minus you're going to have in relation to H plus, okay? So we have acids and bases in a lot of different situations, right? We have um, acid in our stomach, for example, but mostly our body likes to be around seven, like our spit, our blood, that type of stuff is all going to have a pH around seven, pretty close to it. Um, so with that being said, we have a lot of solutions in our body that need to stay at a certain pH. Very, very, very important. So we're going to have something called buffers to help us do that. And what buffers are going to do is they are going to, and this is very, 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 very important, they are going to maintain the pH of a system. Okay, so they're not going to bring the pH to seven. That's something people mess up all the time. Doesn't matter about the number seven when you're talking about buffers. They're just gonna keep the pH the same, okay? The way that they're going to do that is they're either going to give away H pluses or take up H pluses to keep the pH the same. So let me clear this off and we can give an example. So let's say that we have a beaker and it looks like this, where it has a whole bunch of H pluses. Maybe one OH minus. First of all, can anyone tell me, thinking at home, is this an acid or a base, what I just drew? So I'll give you a little bit. Hopefully you're thinking that this is an acid. The reason why is because it has a lot more H pluses than OH minus, okay? Now, let's say that I put a buffer in there. Let's make it green. So now I have a buffer. Okay, now let's say that I'm going to add a bunch of um, bases 
OH minus into our beaker. Okay. Now, if I'm adding more OH minus, what's that going to do to the pH? Let's say originally the pH was 3. If I start to do this, that's going to make the pH go higher, right? So it might make the pH go to like 5 or 6, right? It's going to raise it up. But if there's a buffer, what's going to happen is that buffer is going to throw out more H pluses into the solution to keep the pH at 3, okay? So the job of the buffer is to keep the pH wherever it's at. It can happen in the opposite direction too. And we're actually going to do a lab that's based on that, okay? So that's going to be how buffers work in pH. Now, why do we care about buffers? Well, we have those in our blood, right? Because we want our blood to definitely stay at a certain pH. And so the buffers like calcium and those types of things are in our blood to help our blood stay at that pH. If our blood gets too acidic or too basic, acidosis or alkalosis, those are serious situations. And any of you going into nursing, you're going to learn all about that. So I'll leave that for your nursing courses. Okay. Now, the last thing about water, I feel like I'm doing an infomercial for it, is water is going to have a lower density as a solid than as a liquid. This is exactly why ice floats. Now, let's talk about why ice floats. Have you ever put anything in a glass bottle in your freezer? I did that last summer. I did that with um, some beer bottles, um, and I put them into the freezer, and what happens is beer is mostly water, and the water expanded, the glass did not, and the beer exploded all over my freezer, which was super awesome, right? So the reason for that is because, remember those hydrogen bonds that we were talking about before? Um, Actually, I think I've got a great picture of this on the PowerPoint, which is better. Okay, so here's liquid water. You can see those hydrogen bonds are the dotted lines that you see there. What happens when um, water freezes is it actually does this, where those hydrogen bonds become more permanent, and they form this like hexylene crystal structure. You can see these little hexagons here, right? And so it, you can see that they're more spaced apart than they were here as the liquid. And so what's going to happen is air is going to fill that in, then the ice is going to form, and the ice is going to be less dense than the water because it's got that air in there. Okay, um, This hexylene structure is also why snowflakes look so cool when you look at them up close. And that's because it forms those crystals based on this that you see right here. Okay, So um, that's something that's definitely going to cause problems for us if we get too cold. If you think about a cell, a cell is a pretty delicate thing and it's mostly made of water. If we get it to the point where it's frozen, what's going to happen is the um, ice is going to expand and what's going to happen to that cell? It's going to explode, right? I'm guessing that exploding cells are not exactly good for your health, right? And they're probably not going to recover from that, and that's exactly true. So that's why we have to be careful about freezing and frostbite and those types of things. So that's going to be our little chapter on chemistry. Hope you enjoyed it.